Hi, this is James Reed. Zach McCracken. Jonathan Williams. Jaha Call. And welcome to the Funky Floaters. So we started our project by researching different boat shapes and concrete mixtures. We eventually settled on our boat being 3 by 5 by 15 inches so that it fits into the given dimensions of 5 by 6 by 18. Uh, we wanted a wide hull that would eventually come to a horizontal before coming to the V-shape that would be required for competition. We used hard earth foam to create a mold, which we shaped into a negative of our dimensions. The general shape was cut out with a bandsaw. We did this with woodworking rasps. This was a delicate process because the rasp would take huge bites out of the foam if you were to push too hard. We made the outer mold out of wood we found in the scrap box and cut it to appropriate dimensions and then glued it together with the super duty wood hot glue. We thought that after we would be able to shape it with the power tools. For our concrete mixture, we used 1.5 cup of Poland cement, 1.5 cup of water, 1 cup of sand, and 6 cup of lightweight prolite aggregate for 3 to 3 to 2 to 12 ratio. We didn't want our mixture to be too brittle, and we wanted it to react with water nicely, but we didn't want to use too much water because it would be too heavy to float. We mixed the concrete with a five gallon bucket and a stick. We poured it down, patting the shape as we went. Uh, we messed up a little bit in this because we had a lot of concrete that we would end up uh, molding as a result of this. Uh, we didn't really realize the sheer amount of molding that it would take to cut off the edges and to form the canoe. We let it sit for about a week and then pulled it out of the mold. We believed it to be very porous and thought that the water would easily sleep into the sides. We were in fact wrong because it was a great quality that made it very light. In regards to shaping, we used a screw, a hammer, and concrete files. We used a flat screwdriver as a chisel and we used the concrete files to smooth the edges. The first day we shaped for about three hours and then we decided that we needed to repatch the side. We put it back into the mold and mix the more solid mixture of concrete with less aggregate and less water to make sure it was watertight. We mixed this in a bag. These are two sides that we wanted to patch up. Now I know you're kind of surprised at this point, but uh, that was essentially our finished product. Um, it had been successful in the tests we had done. Um, from there, we spray painted it white. We had gotten it down into the V shape on the outside that we had desired, in, which was a requirement in the competition. Um, the inside showed a much harder V shape, but it was uh, difficult to do that with the tools that we had, and we didn't want to break through the bottom causing any leakage during competition. Fed day. We got to the competition ready to go. We set up our booth with a sufficiently funky presentation. We are ready to go believing we had fulfilled the correct requirements and confident on our canoe's floating abilities as we had measured and tested it on multiple occasions. So here's our canoe in competition. Isn't she beautiful? Um, so we brought our canoe up to the competition area to begin and the judges took our research and uh, took the specs on our canoe and we then proceeded to drop the canoe in the water and add as many marbles as we possibly could. Uh, after weighing the marbles, uh, we found out that our canoe was able to hold 1.8 kilograms worth of marbles. Uh, the judges then told us that that would be enough for a possible honorable mention. We were pretty excited about that. Uh, but there's kind of one thing that we left out. So we, we didn't make the measurements. Uh, to be exact, we were 3 16th of an inch off. We were too wide for the competition. Uh, since then, we've contributed that change in width to the second edition of Concrete. So advice to incoming freshmen, start early. Definitely can't emphasize enough, you need to start early, just early as possible. Start early, and start early and double check your measurements. Another big thing, you cannot use power tools on concrete. The dust gets into the moving parts of power tools and just messes it all up. Make a negative or a positive or whatever that would be so that it's coming, it's coming out the shape you want it as.
Um, obviously, these all work back here. You know, several times we had to work back. You know, we tested. We found it was unbalanced after we built, and we came back here. And we had to kind of think about what we could do. So we thought we would shave the side. You know, balance out the weight a little better. Um, and then we came back over here. Obviously, um, after our first build, we had to come all the way back to the side and figure out how we could patch up those sides because they were clearly they were clearly not high enough for the for water or for you know floating. And so then we came back over here and we tested two to three times and we were good to go. It was just a you know poor mental lapse by us to not realize that that box maybe had um, grown a little bit. The box we made with the three by five by 15 to fit inside what we had been given. Um, we didn't patch, we probably didn't close that up as well as we needed to. And you know, we were a little bigger than we needed to be for the competition. And um, that was upsetting, but um, we did build a canoe that, that floated.